All right, this is part one of the Garad radio. I took out the screws that hold the front end and um, we're going to look into it and see how much of a job it is to get into this. And I wasn't going to start this until the warmer weather, but we're going to have a few days of warm weather so we can start it. And if it gets cold again, we'll put it in a cardboard box. I've got the four little screws in one of these Altoid tins that Tommy gave me. There's four very, very small Phillips screws. They came out very easily. The knob comes off very easy. The plastic looks like something was glued here, but I don't see anything unusual on the back, so it looks very good. There is a cardboard piece inside, and it's really in mint condition. The speaker measures two and a quarter inches from here to here, which is a very small speaker. However, we got two things here we have to be very careful of. You can see that you can't get the tubes, even get at the tubes, unless you take the chassis out. Now, the biggest issue is going to be these wires right here. I can't tell. It looks like they're soldered onto something. I'm pretty sure the lid will stay in place. It wouldn't do any good to take it off. There are wires that go up inside. And there's no way you could get at the coil in here. Like on the Motorola radios, you had a whole bunch of microscopic Phillips screws. But these seem to be rivets. So you can't get inside here to unsolder this. So this is more or less part one unofficially. Because they have to take the ca uh, chassis out in order to even get at the tubes. They're in there and they're wedged in there pretty good. You can see here that there are paper caps in there. You can see where I put the 3 in 1 oil on the ball bearings. I do that on all my radios. And then I put the white lithium grease or the luber plate uh, grease in there also. I haven't done that yet. Now it appears to be that this quarter inch nut here and this one where my finger's pointing, where am I here? is the second one. I think I think the chassis will come right out, but you're going to have wires on the switch, which is right here. See that little button sticking out? And these wires. So let's peek around the back, and I got to put this on a tripod so you can perhaps see it. Alright, I got you on a tripod here. Uh, it looks like those two wires that come off the coil, the uh, loop stick, a loop coil, I should say. One is soldered to the IF can, so I've got to get a good hot iron to get that off. So you unsolder that, and the other one appears to be right here. I don't know how well you can see that. I moved the light at different angles here. As I say, I don't have good lighting for doing video like a lot of you guys have, so trying to get you the best I can see in there uh, for you to see in there I should say um, so that is one thing that has to be done in order to even get at the tubes the only tube I can get at right now is this one here and test it um, I put the put away all the wires for now that for the uh, rats' power supply, because that was only a test. 
Um, to see if the radio was in, had any life. I think there's probably a bad tube in here. I would imagine that's probably what it is, but there's probably a lot of capacitors that would have to be changed too, but I would have to unsolder these and over here the power switch right here uh, it looks like I got two quarter inch I think they're quarter inch they could be five sixteenths uh, the screws on the front, and that could come out with the chassis. But on this, here, I have to unsolder that. These two tubes here, it would be a real struggle. I couldn't get my fingers in there to pull them out. So I'm pretty sure the chassis is going to have to come out of the radio. It has to anyways because this tube here, I'm not even in camera here, this tube here, you can't get out of any other way but to take the chassis out. I uh, I think what I'm going to do, I got to wait because uh, if I have to order any tubes, I have some of these tubes on hand. But I don't, if it needs a 3S4, I don't have that. Uh, 3V4, I may have. I may have. I don't even know. Um, so, uh, Okay, so we're going to do, I don't think I'm going to attempt to unsolder this. This is going to be, um, show and tell more. It's, it's part one, but it's um, more of showing what I have to do. Okay, so, All right, there's, uh, I was wrong, there's two screws here. That, if you, I take those out, and hopefully they're self-tapping and not having a nut on the back of them. Uh, let's see if I can look in there. They appear to be self-tapping. It don't look like anyone's ever worked on this. The speaker's in beautiful condition. Uh, no um, cone moves, no rubbing. Cone moves very easily. So this tube would be impossible to get out without taking the radio out. This, you just, there's just no room. They're just wedged right against the IF can. So it's really a compact radio, but once you get it out, I should be able to get at the capacitors underneath. But I'm almost certain that that 8 microfarad that's in there is probably okay because it did form up very quickly and uh, it was drawing current when I put the A battery in as I showed you on that. So it don't look to me like it's going to be too, too bad and it might only be a tube. My biggest worry, and I, I get people that ask me, and I mentioned it in this last video, why don't you just buy the nine, you know, get the nine volt batteries? And I say that I don't want to invest in them right now. If either one of these IF cans go, and I know one of my viewers says it's very unlikely because it's very low voltage, you're dealing with 67 and a half volts, and the radio hasn't been used in so long that's unlikely to be silver mica disease. But uh, I'm dead in the water if either one of these have silver mica disease or the coils are open. If the speaker's open, which I don't think it is because I did get a faint, faint static out of the speaker when I 
<coughs> move the A battery. So, again, we appear to have quarter here, quarter inch. I think it's a quarter inch. I have the socket for it anyways. If it's smaller, it looks like quarter inch. And one here, that should hold the whole chassis in. But the biggest thing is, you probably can't quite see that, is these wires here. One is soldered to the IF can for ground. And the other one goes to probably the antenna section of the tuning condenser, I would say. So, um, I would say, I would say, I would say. Uh, it doesn't look like it's too bad, but I don't want to get into it. The, the situation here is, I tear this all down, and I get involved and start replacing caps which I want to check all the tubes and make sure all the tubes are good. Then there's going to be a delay before I'll be able to buy the tubes for reasons I just explained, whatever it may need. And things get forgotten where they go. Like when you start taking screws out, you know, I see so many guys take things apart and just, you know, pop the screws out, take the whole thing out. How the heck do they remember where they all go back in? There's, unless they're all one size. They're all one size that don't matter. <laughs> but you got to have a, a photographic memory to remember how it went back together again. So I don't want this, as I said, sitting on the sidelines or, you know, or put away for a, a, a month or two because of weather or because of money reasons that I can't complete it. So... I just wanted to give myself a real look at this. The schematic and service information tells you how to align it, which is very easy, not much to it. It doesn't tell you anything about how to replace the tubes, which you have to take the chassis out. It don't tell you that. But it's pretty self-explanatory. You just got two here, and that'll probably slide right out. The volume control is mounted to the chassis. You can see there's a a little cutout here in the main frame here in the main cabinet so it's going to clear that the push button switch is going to just drop inside after I release these two screws and these wires can be pulled out away or the chassis can be pulled out once I unsolder these and the whole radio should come out so that's not a problem. The problem's going to be um, making sure I got all the tubes first. And in order to do that, I have to take this out, out of the case, test the tubes, because obviously the radio's not working, so there's no point in, you know, hooking it up to any DC source right now. It's already established that it does not work with a 69 volts of B plus going in it and 1.3 volts off the D battery which should be okay to light the filaments. 1.4 is what the tubes uh, are designed to operate at however um, the battery of 1.5 volt D cell when brand new usually reads about 1.6 volts unloaded. So loaded down, it'd probably be one and a half. So you're only uh, 1.4, 1.5. So you're only, I'd say, what, tenth of a volt more on these tubes? Uh, fresh diesel? Well, the radio is designed for that. So I'm going to err on the side of caution here, and I'm going to... I know what I got to do, and this is primarily what this video is about and why I am doing this today. There's nothing like video to watch where everything goes. So all I did is take four little tiny screws that go in the corners here. Out. 
and they are very, very small. Uh, this doesn't want to drop in. This just lays in place, but you got to make sure it's in a good position here. There we go. And we're not in the way of this? Okay. Now I'll open up the Altoids and watch me drop this all over my butterfingers. I got it marked. Gordo Radio. There's only, you know, see how tiny these things are? They're microscopic. For my eyes, they're microscopic. This is a number one Phillips, I believe. I magnetize my my uh, screwdrivers with um, a magnet, just a little bit across. But sometimes you get stainless steel screws. You can't pick them up with a magnet. Or sometimes they're aluminum or some other metal. Um, these reading glasses aren't going to do it. I just cannot see that. I took them out for that. So we got my... Other oh, spectacles here. Very gently. Very gently. Because I can feel it when it comes to a stop. They look like brass screws. But if they were, they would not be picked up, be able to pick them up with a magnet. So I want to put this together because I'm not ready to get into it yet. So I don't think we're going to call this part one because it's when I do part one, I want to be servicing this. So uh, I don't think we're going to call this part one is, well, I'll find a name for this video. <laughs> and, well, I'm giving you a lot of videos, ain't I? Okay. Very good. You know, if I had good eyesight, I could do a lot more. Of course, I could never do microscopic stuff like pocket transistor radios. I had excellent eyesight, but I just can't work with small stuff. I envy the guys that can do that. All right, now, let's find my tuning uh, knob here. I don't like taking this on and off either too much because, um, you know, it's only plastic. It's got tiny splines in here inside and um, you know on and off too much it does wear it out that's all I'm not going to worry about it if it don't line up but it does line up pretty good okay we keep it closed okay so we've got got her all back together And that's it. I know what I got to do. When I get the extra cash, I got to figure if I have to replace three or four tubes that I don't have, I got to make sure I got enough money to do that. And um, I'm not spending any money for the next couple of weeks because... Uh, Valentine's Day is coming up, and i got to get my wife something. And our anniversary is the day after Valentine's Day. So that's very important. The wife comes first. Radios come later. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. And when I'm ready to get tubes for this, then I'll take it out of the cabinet, and I'll... Take out the tubes, test them all, and go from there. The only thing that will not 
I will not know until I get the radio going is whether it was silver mica disease, which one of my viewers says it's very unlikely, but it is that type of IF can. So, um, nonetheless, the worst case scenario, it'll be a very beautiful shelf queen. Because I am keeping this radio. I am not going to part with this one. All right. You take care. We'll be doing more on this radio. And if we get a stretch of good weather at least a week, and I'm able to get out here, fine. Otherwise, it'll wait for spring, as I originally said it was going to be. Take care, everybody. Thanks for watching.